All right, baby. Give me some of that sweet, sweet Sonic news we've all been dying for. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, that's what I figured. But hey, I'm sure they'll tell us when they're able to. In the meantime, though, I can think of no better time than to look back into the realm of fan games. All right, so there's a few hundred games I want to look at, I guess. Yo, what's that out in the water? Dude, it's a shark! No, wait, I meant the other thing. Oh, hey, it's a surf shark. Huh, that's a fun coincidence. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, a service that'll stop prying eyes from taking shark-sized bites out of your personal data. After all, who really needs their credit card information, or worse, your Raid Shadow Legends account password getting stolen thanks to an unsecured internet connection? With Surfshark, that's a thing of the past. With one simple click of a button on any of your devices, you'll instantly be whisked away to safety. For example, let's say that someday we're allowed to go to conventions again, and your hotel's Wi-Fi is sketching you out a little bit? Well, don't worry, your guardian angel will be right there to stave off anyone trying to sell your data to advertisers. And while that might be useful, let's say you're bored after a long day of living it up, and you want to watch, oh, I don't know, Doctor Who, because Garrel is 64 told you to it's a really good show. Well, go ahead and set your location to the UK and head over to Netflix and whoa, look, there it is. <laughs> Who would have thought all you had to do was not be in the United States? See, some services lock content to certain regions, which is pretty lame, but with Surfshark, just forget about it. If you're interested in anything mentioned here, grab Surfshark at surfshark.deal slash garrulous and enter the promo code garrulous. Spelling it right really isn't hard, I promise. With that, you get 83% off your purchase and three whole months for free. This is a certified good deal alert. Thank you, Surfshark. Yo, now my data's protected. But can Surfshark also protect my legs from that guy? <laughs> nah. Hello, everybody. I am Garrulous64, and this week has been the shining gem amongst the dull pile of rocks that is 2020. If you're not aware, this week, the Sonic Amateur Games Expo, or SAGE for short, has been showing off a lengthy list of the newest and recently updated fan games, hacks, and original projects. Some of your favorite content creators have also been streaming these games all this week, including myself, having already done so last Saturday. You can watch the VOD on my stream archive channel. This contest, however, isn't dedicated solely to Sonic fan games, despite what the name might have you believe. But as for today, I wanted to just focus on a couple Sonic games that really stuck out to me. I'd love to cover as many of these as possible, but I know every single game I add to this list makes this video grow longer, and I don't actually have the time or the desire to make a huge video essay right now, or ever for that matter. If I don't touch on something in this video, it doesn't mean I didn't like it or it wasn't worth playing, I just picked the ones that really wowed me during my first stream. And hey, I can always come back and do this again sometime down the line, so that's just more to look forward to in the future, right? Now this first game requires something I never thought or ever really wanted to use for a Sonic game. Yeah. Uh, please have mercy on my stomach. The thought of a VR Sonic game always sort of made me feel like this, but Virtua Sonic not only provides a vomit-free experience, but also a really engaging one that I've returned to twice now. It's not the longest game out there, but it does include two full levels, a boss fight, and a story mode with full voice acting that's honestly really impressive. That's no good. I'll be sure to fix this right away. <laughs> Alright, Eggman. I know you've got cheese trapped in this big old body of yours, so just go ahead and give them up before things get ugly. The first thing I noticed about this game is just how beautiful it is. I caught myself just sitting around looking at things on my first playthrough, since unlike a lot of other 3D fan games, Virtua Sonic strove to create totally unique levels instead of copy and pasting City Escape or Emerald Coast. And that's probably for the best, because this in VR sounds like a terrible idea. In fact... Oh. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Alright, rings, that's good. Oh dear. Okay. <sighs> yep, yep, suspicion confirmed. All my ideas are bad ideas. Before you boot up the game, just know that you're gonna be moving around a little bit while playing. To move, you need to hold both A buttons, at least on the Oculus Rift, and then swing your arms like you were doing some crazy exaggerated jog. Thankfully, you don't actually have to run in place, or else my entire room would be in danger and not just my green screen lights. Seriously, these things take a beating when I'm swinging my arms around in VR. There is no way to stop this. 
To jump, you need to hold the triggers and then swing your arms down. This is one of the parts of the control scheme I occasionally had problems with as I'd swing my arms up and down and all around, but sometimes it just did not provide the ups I was looking for. Also, anything having to do with precise platforming in this, or just platforming involving jumping in general, was a little bit frustrating. But I'll get into that more later, because uh, there's a little bit more to the control scheme that I have to talk about. Throwing your arms backwards in the air results in a homing attack. The reticle does a great job of highlighting the nearest object that you're looking at, and there's also a stop move that doesn't really get used that much that's triggered by raising your arms up after a jump. Sonic can also spin dash and roll, which you activate either by standing in place and crossing your arms, or simply by moving and doing the same thing. While rolling, you can uncurl by returning your arms to their normal running motion, and then you can follow that up by throwing your arms behind you again like you're about to do a homing attack, except this brings you into a mock speed section of sorts, where Sonic runs at top speed and can travel over water. When the game doesn't rob you of all your speed and throw you into the drink unfairly, it's ironically a pretty chill time where you just have to focus on turning as opposed to performing all the motion controls. Now there's one key word in that last sentence, and that's turning. When this game initially released, the only way to turn Sonic around was to physically move your body, and if you've never played VR before, let me tell you, moving like that, even if you think you're not moving much, you are. After enough unintentional movement, you might be attending the funeral of one of your green screen lights that you tragically struck down with a killer uppercut if you're not careful. It's all my fault. Didn't deserve this. Things like this unfortunately make for a really awkward streaming experience, and also a video making experience if this footage is anything to go by, since you're always drifting off camera and farther away from your microphone as a result. And then of course there's the property damage, but I'm sure he'll pull through. The game did update since the first time I tried it to add in the ability to flick the control stick and turn Sonic 180 degrees, which helped a little bit. But for something like this where you can easily get thrown off course, just having that 180 degree change is not going to help you in every instance and you're still going to have to physically adjust yourself. And it ends up leading to a lot more frustration than you might think. If you could rotate Sonic in increments of 45 degrees instead, I think it would pretty much solve this issue and make it a lot more playable. For instance, this area here has the issue of precise platforming and the turning problem, since this slope for some reason kept activating my stomp when I didn't want it to. Then when I'd finally get up there, I'd have to physically turn myself to get to the part where I'd try my best to reach the spring in the middle, but would almost always fall because jumping and homing attacking to small platforms is really difficult from this perspective. I'm at least happy to say that nothing else in this entire game is this frustrating unless you get really unlucky with the boss, which I did. This being my second go around, I knew exactly how this was going to go down, so I put everything I learned into it, and I still think the boss is my favorite part of the entire game. Since if you know what you're doing, you can get some good speed going, and that coupled with leaping into the air to strike the boss before going back through the gauntlet again is THE Sonic action I've always loved, and it feels right at home in VR. You're still able to fall victim to the control issues I've been mentioning, though. So, for example, if you botch a jump to get over to this platform, you might have to spend some time configuring yourself in the real world so Sonic can run the right direction. And for some reason, the game really thought I was trying to roll, like, all the time when I was running around, clearly not crossing my arms. But this is one hell of an experience that I still want to play again, regardless of how frustrating it can be. And I know I glossed over this, but part of the story is that Eggman is putting chow inside his robots to power them, and that is absolutely unacceptable. His punishment is death by hug. Ah, no! uh, yes. <laughs> Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? I don't know if they're going to be expanding on this more in the future since technically it's a finished game, but I would really like to see more. Next up, why don't we look at a fan game that gives you the freedom to go wherever you want as long as you know what you're doing. Sonic Freedom is something I've been watching for a while, from when it was first introduced as a concept to now having the demo in my grubby little hands. I've always thought it looked incredible, so let's see if it actually plays incredible too. I mean, a 2D Sonic game hand-drawn in a similar fashion to the legendary Sonic OVA movie? Yeah, sign me up please. Push notifications, email alerts, carrier pigeon scrolls, the whole nine yards. All the footage I've seen for this game looked great, but the one thing I was always curious about was the directional air dash, which I'm just gonna call the dad for now because it's shorter. It seemed like an interesting idea, but it also looked like it might have broken up the pace of the game a little bit. Very happy to report, however, that I'm always wrong and the game is absolutely still fast-paced and very fun to run around in. Well, at first I thought there was no objective in this demo at all, so I just kept running around and actually listening to the new Sonic OVA soundtrack that just got released. I guess it's not new, but it is new to our ears because we never actually had the full thing. But anyway, not going to play any of those during the video because uh, those Sonic OVA ninjas are actually kind of scary. I've seen what they do to streams and videos on YouTube. <sighs> The game actually does have an ending, but you're only able to reach it once you've really got a grasp on how this thing plays. It takes a bit to find too, but once you're done running up and down the beanstalks and exploring, you use the dad to fling Sonic high into the sky, bounding along a batch of bad bots before grabbing a rupee and ending the demo. Really good stuff here, I'm very excited for the future of this one. 
I know that was a pretty quick segment for this video, but I really only had seven minutes of footage, so that should give you an idea of how long the experience actually lasted. But coming to you next is an encore that I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for. I know you guys want a Sonic 3 remaster along the lines of Christian Whitehead's Sonic 1, 2, and CD, and to that I say, go play Sonic 3 Air. It's basically that, except with a lot more features included that I don't think Sega or Sonic Team would ever sign off on giving us. Of course, they're not going to sign off on giving us a real remaster either, so I mean, I guess that's a moot point. If you've still got that Sonic 3 bug, however, check out Sonic Encore. It's a new 3D Sonic game that reimagines classic Sonic 3 zones. Sonic 3 is looking a lot more like Sonic 3D, you know what I'm saying? I know the Sand Hill thing is a bad joke, but every joke I tell is a bad joke, so it fits right in, don't it? Despite the menu screen being devoid of color, when you're dropped into Angel Island Zone, the visuals bombard your eyes with color and beauty like a ton of bombs falling directly onto your head. Or Tails Head, rather. I mean, for real, dude, just look at how good this place looks. It's Angel Island Zone, right? You remember it, but it feels like the grand elaboration that my mind created the first time I ever saw it in Sonic 3, if that makes any sense. The characters in this game also sport a very nice moveset, including the Spin Dash, Bounce, Homing Attack, and they each have their own specials. Those being a Drop Dash, a Double Jump, a Quick Drop Dash, and Gliding, with possible wall climbing? I only got Knuckles to latch on once, and I couldn't really do anything after I grabbed the wall. Zooming through this zone, using the vast move pool at your disposal is a blast no matter which character you pick. And again, like the other 3D Sonic games on this list, this game doesn't just copy these level layouts from anywhere. These are totally new takes on an existing level that, sure, share similar set pieces and bosses, but they are totally different. It's incredible, it's so fun, more people should do this. On the other hand, the other thing in this demo, Ice Cap is a little bit of a mixed bag when compared to Angel Island Zone. There's something about how it looks that just doesn't really match up to how graphically refined the first zone looks, but that's not really a deal breaker or an icebreaker. <laughs> yeah. The level layouts here start to get really complicated and it's easy to get turned around, but one thing I do love about this zone is how fluid the whole thing feels. Like when you get going, you're gonna be zip zooming down hills and past platforming sections like it's nothing and it's such a great feeling. The bosses in this demo, however, aren't really anything special. Some of them drag on for way too long or are just sort of like tedious. I can especially point my finger at the last boss of every zone because, like, Angel Islands is way too tedious and I ended up skipping it because I died halfway through it, and Ice Caps was just confusing, like, I wasn't getting damaged by it really, except for, like, one time, and then I just kept hitting it and then it just went away. I guess Eggman got bored. I don't know, I was a little bored. Suffice to say, though, this demo was pretty cool. <laughs> did you see what I did there? I said it was cool because Ice Cap is really cold, and, you know, like, therefore, it's... Word, it's wordplay, and yeah, the next one we're looking at is Sonic Quantum Collision. If you've been hanging around my channel for a bit, you've seen this game at least once. What we've got this time is a two-level demo, which is one more level than the last time, and I uh, was not actually expecting it. Back from the first demo is Rainy Ruins, but before you're thrown into the familiar, here's a switch up. There's a fully 3D hub world where you can run around and find pretty much nothing, but that's okay because it's just a demo. It's this kind of spice that I've come to expect from this project and its amazing visuals, music, and level design, and I'm really glad to see them continue to surprise me. Now when I mentioned amazing visuals, I wasn't just talking purely about the aesthetics of the game, I was more so talking about the absurd level of detail that's on display here. Of course, there's big things like the bosses taking battle damage as the fights go on, but then there's smaller things like, I look at the underwater sprites, he holds his breath like it's so unnecessary, but I don't know, I love it. It makes it even better. And then we continue the theme of surprises, and there is a cutscene before the second act starts, and it's like, how much more could you do to make this amazing? Like, I, I think this is already a candidate for one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. The game also has its own perspective on special stages, and I guess I just wasn't up to the challenge today, not surprising really, but they're fun. They're a little bit slow, but I assume as they go up in difficulty, that will not be the case anymore. Then, of course, we have Dr. Robotnik, looking like carrying the weight of his failures on his back has resulted in some mad gains. Seriously, the man has never looked better. And I mean, like, health-wise, I'm very happy for him. My ears were also really happy for him, because he's rocking one of the most bumpin' remixes of a battle song from the original trilogy that I've ever heard in my life. And, like, then the demo ends, and I'm practically drooling over the thought of what happens next time this game updates. Like, please, I need more. You know, that hub world really got me thinking about Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, and wouldn't you know it, there's actually another game bumming around Sage this year that kind of fills the void of that sequel slash expansion that I've always wanted. 
And I don't have a joke segue for this part because uh, I'm still reeling from the last one. I am very sorry. Coming at you now with Sonic 3D Blitz, and I want you to guess how many times I said 3D Blast during this recording session because that's just what comes to mind naturally. It was more than four times at least. I have a really weird relationship with this game because at first I was really excited for a new isometric Sonic adventure in the vein of Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. But upon checking the Sage page, I learned it was a browser-based game. Not exactly in love with that fact, I'd really rather have it locally, but I got over it and I dove into the action and that's where I found another thing I wasn't crazy about. At first I thought it was going to be awkward to control, but again, I got over it since the levels are designed with this control scheme in mind, which makes most of the deaths I encountered feel fair. Keyword, most. As Sonic, your goal is to reach the end of each stage alive while jumping, rolling, and occasionally homing attacking your way past obstacles. It's not a terribly fast-paced game, but you can take it as fast as you want as long as you're careful with your platforming. You have to wait around in the second stage a bit because there's some auto-scrolling sections, but for the most part, the game is a 3D blast to play. Stage 2 even switches things up by including an electric shield that you can use to skip a section of the stage if you manage to hold onto it for long enough. Too bad though, the game then got me confused because the depth perception and graphics led me to believe that I could stand on this when it was actually just a giant death pit. This game also adopts Sega Sonic's alliteration-based titles, at least for the stages I saw. Those stages I saw being Sunrise Shore, Searing Sands, and Pumpkin Panic, and honestly, they all get that little part of my lizard brain that likes fun names really excited. Speaking of Pumpkin Panic though, this is where I ended up stopping because I found yet another thing I wasn't a huge fan of. These spike walls. If you don't know they're coming, thanks to how the game plays, you will die. You need to know if they're there or not because if you get hit by the first one, the game kills you, so it's a one life minimum every time you first come across them. It wouldn't be a big problem if the game didn't have a live system, but it does, so I guess it is a problem. In my opinion, trial and error gameplay is almost never fun. Sure, the game gives you continues, but if something happens, you know, let's say, like, a random crash that forces you to reload the page, your data is gone, so good luck starting from the beginning again. And that is the specific reason I would have preferred it be a downloadable title as opposed to a browser game. Alright, we've got two more, so let's get into the Grand Tour. This is the big one, guys. This is THE fan game that I've said in the past is amongst my absolute favorites. Right up there with Sonic Roboblast 2, Sonic GT is now a fully complete 3D Sonic game with some of the most fun gameplay I've experienced in this series in a long time. It includes a story mode with full voice acting, four totally unique sprawling stages that you can tackle with seven different characters, and I just need to drive this point back home, but did I mention that it's a fun 3D Sonic game that's really competently designed? I mean, when's the last time that happened? 2011? And even so, that was half 2D. Out of the four levels available, Sunset Boulevard is my favorite by far, since for one thing it looks like Studiopolis, but more than that, it provides a very fun romp through a place littered with alternate pathways, and it's a good experience no matter what character you play as. Especially Ray, because flying around is exhilarating and I love it. Speaking of that squirrel fella, he's actually one of the main characters in the story. Dr. Eggman, much like Virtua Sonic, decides that little animals aren't cutting it anymore, so he's gonna put big animals in robots. Sonic, Mighty, and Tails don't like that even a little bit, so they go find Shadow, who Sonic now has a very complicated relationship with apparently, and the four traverse through stages and bosses alike to help Ray. On the topic of the story, I think the presentation is a little bit bland, but it's a direct step up from any of the DS Sonic games we got, since this one has full body renders for their poses and also voice acting. The voice acting, however, is a little lackluster as well, like Sonic and Mighty sound a little bit too similar, and I don't know, it wasn't really doing it for me. Ugh, really? Sunset Boulevard? <sighs> Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Totally passable though, don't get me wrong. I also was not a fan of this flying boss, because it felt like I had to sit around and wait until I was allowed to attack it, and it just went on forever. So eventually, in desperation, I end up trying to hit it faster, but that wasn't a reliable way of doing things, and every time my patience ran out, I just end up dead. In comes this nice handy dandy 100% save file that let me experience the rest of the game. Thank you, Melpontro. The last level is a little bit dark in some areas, but I find it a lot easier to get through than some of the earlier demos I experienced, so that's a good sign. Now all I gotta do is figure out why I keep getting lost in the seaside level, because honestly, every time I play this I end up going the wrong way at least once when I didn't the first time, like I got through it no problem. I, I don't know, maybe my internal compass just ain't what it used to be. If you've got a PC that can handle 3D Sonic fan games, play Sonic GT. Play it as soon as you can and for as long as you can because it is incredible. And I just thought I'd drop this huge note here, just because you might dislike certain things about a game or a show or whatever, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it as a whole. Talking about something's flaws is not the same thing as saying it's bad. Ah, <laughs> interesting question. No, I hate those. That's different. Last one today, it's a treat of galactic proportions. It's Sonic Galactic. Huh. You know, even when he's not in the background of the videos anymore, he still finds his way back in.
Easter egg aside, Sonic Galactic is another 2D game, and it's one that came out of literally nowhere. I'd never heard of it before Sage 2020, and that's apparently because it was just revealed, and I believe the world might have collectively shed a single tear over how perfect it is. Before the hacking contest, I knew about a few things like Quantum Collision and the SRB1 remake, which I will 100% talk about another time. And there were a few others, of course, but truth be told, I almost felt like I was getting a little burnt out on 2D Sonic. I don't know, maybe that had something to do with playing Mania every day for like two years straight, but I mean, too much of a good thing could never be a bad thing, right? Oh boy. Case in point, I was much more interested in the 3D fan games when they would pop up, because honestly, I always liked 3D platformers more in general anyway. So basically, when I played this first on my first stream this year, uh, it kind of brought me right out of that funk like I was KO'd and it waved smelling salts in front of my face. There is not one thing I dislike about this demo. The pixel art had me speechless, the level design and bosses were fun and flowed really well, and the five playable characters each had something fun to add to the table. Aside from Knuckles, who ended up freezing in place after grabbing walls and even straight up crashing the game at one point. I'm sure that was probably fixed in a patch that I haven't seen or whatever, but the two new characters are also really fun to play as. Them being Knack the Goddamn Weasel, and original character, Tunnel the Mole. The internet's new favorite Sonic fan character, apparently. And I definitely can't blame them, because Tunnel is a precious new friend and we have to protect him at all costs. Knack, aside from displaying some smooth as hell animations, now that's what I call a smooth criminal, am I right? Is able to use his pop gun for a double jump of sorts. The longer it charges, the higher he goes, and with the levels currently in the demo, this already feels like a gimmick that fits better with the environment than what Ray or Mighty brought to the table in Mania Plus. Tunnel actually does exactly what his name suggests. He digs into the ground, and that's where he stays until you press the jump button again. Tunnel then launches himself upwards, getting some incredible height, and basically makes up for the fact that he is not Tails the Fox and can't actually fly, but I guess he's sort of flying. I mean, look at him. I just love all of them. Every single character in this demo, even Tails, is fun to play as, since they included the flight cancel ability, so you don't need to wait for him to fall back to the ground on his own. And the drop dash? The drop dash is here? I love it! I'm so glad the drop dash is a staple in so many fan games now. Like, thank you! Starting my stream with this one really kicked off my Sage stream with a big bang, I guess you could say. At this point, I don't think I have any more words to describe to you how much I love this, so I'm just gonna quit wasting your time and tell you to play this game. Hell, check out everything I mentioned here today and more if you can. There are a ton of games I didn't get to talk about today that are both related to and not at all related to Sonic, and they're just sitting there waiting for you to experience them. If you want more personal recommendations from me, go check out Sonic Robo Blast, Sonic Triple Trouble 16-Bit, which you might see in a video next week, Sonic Speed Course, Super Mario All-Star Attack, Super Mario Flashback, Kirby's Dream Land Plus, The Legend of Zelda Eternal Rain, David Get Keen, Poppin' and Juppa, Pocket Adventure, Radventure, Delta Gal, and Project Butterfly. Them's right there are some of the ones that stuck out to me so far, but whatever you end up playing, just make sure to have a good time. This is the end of the video, I'm done for today. Gosh. If you want to play anything that I showed you today, or if you want to see any of the stuff I recommended, whatever, check out the website for Sage in the description, everything should be in order. You can also follow me on Twitch if you want to see me stream stuff like this, that'd be kind of cool. But anyway, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic reviews and other things that aren't Sonic reviews, because I do a lot of things. Now, without further ado, let's give those supporters a shout out. We've got Mike TGC, Common CJ, Chaotic Mercenary, Motor Mouse V2, Crazy Sean DX, Raiden Still Plays, Chaos, Cosmic Mushroom, Ty Little Tech Guy, Jaded Indolent, Jeremy, Lucas Tallman, Mega Traffic Cone, Crystal. And on Patreon, we've got John the Real Wawa Luigi, Rob Morrison, and everyone else in the $1 tiers, which are also amazing, and thank you so much, because that's still worth a lot to me. Seriously, even for $1 a month, you can get some of these perks, which include shoutouts at the end of each video, and also special blooper reels that should happen with every upload most of the time, unless I'm feeling boring that day. But that's all. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you watched the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all next time.